such a time as this. And welcome to 2020. This is our first podcast of the decade. The place where there is no such thing as a silent witness. I am your round table director. Prof. Chris, Prof. Abby, and Prof. Dennis welcoming in the new year. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Howdy. Happy 2020. We have a very, <clears throat> maybe, uh, shall we say, prophetic topic. The, what does it say, unsaved Christian. And so we have Drew Dick and Hannah Anderson is talking to Dean Inceta about his book, The Unsaved Christian. He defines what he means by that. Uh, let me play it for you. You you must have gotten some heat for the title of this book, <laughs> The Unsaved Christian. So can you just explain to listeners how in the world can someone be an unsaved Christian? Well, it's really simple when we actually explain it, and that's that there's many people across the United States who, if you ask them, would claim to be a Christian. And by mm -hmm. that, they simply mean they're not an atheist and they're not Jewish or maybe a member of one of the world's large religions, and they're a good person. And again, they just believe in God. But when I read the scriptures, I don't see that as a saving faith. Notice in my answer to why someone would say they're a Christian that I didn't even mention the name of Jesus. You can uh. identify as a Christian in the United States without any recognition of Jesus and his work on the cross and his resurrection whatsoever. Uh, so that's where the name unsaved Christian came from, is people who would claim to be Christians if asked, but their reason for doing so is not a saving faith in any way, shape, or form. The unsaved Christian is a Christian who does not know who Christ is. Prof. Dennis, I'll open it up with you. Well, when I first heard about this, and it made me think, you know, I've, t I've been talking with some of my buddies over the years about people who fill the pews at a church, mm -hmm. churches I've attended, um, that for years, yeah, well, yes, yes, and they they don't know Christ, and and you get the feeling. I mean, when you're younger in the faith, you you don't see as much. You can just figure if someone says they're a Christian and they maybe pray once in a while and they you know over a meal, which or something, and or they go to a missions trip. You think that they they know Christ, and so you just you don't question them. But as I've gotten older and I've heard and I know people, cl people close to me who quote unquote have prayed the prayer mm -hmm. and people above them saying, well, you're saved. And yet their mm -hmm. lives, I mean, mm -hmm. are inseparable from the secular world. Um, it's, it's, it it grip it, it, gri it gri grips me, this this idea of the unsaved Christian and and to hear him articulate some of the points were, have have uh, helped solidify uh, some things in my mind about this. Well, I'm going to be the advocate here, Prof. Dennis. You must not know the most famous verse in the Bible: <laughs> "Judge not." It seems like we're talking about a, a conversation in which we're going to be very judgmental. Is that a question? <laughs> I'm just saying you should know the the most famous verse. Well, because okay. the news, CNN, and MSC, they were mind of of the most important verse in all the scriptures. Prof. Abby, judge not, at least you know, judge not. I think that's how they cut it well, off. Well, I, I think this comes more from a place of, I mean, not not of judgment, but of concern. Mm-hmm. Because it, it does seem like there are so many people, and we live in an area here mm -hmm. where we are in the backyard of two mega, mega churches. Mega organizations. Organizations. But go ahead. <laughs> oh, Gee. Um, and so there are a lot of people here who profess Christ in this particular area. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, in G but then we are also told to, to, to look for fruit. Mm -hmm. And it isn't there. In the and, same passage, Matthew and, 7. And, and you know, I, we've heard all heard stories of uh, single friends who are, you know, 
dating and, and using the dating apps and and looking <laughs> for Christians and and what they're they're having the hardest time finding people who who hold to the Christian sexual ethic who obey oh, God gosh. who don't who don't expect to have premarital sex and these are parent these are Chris people who call themselves Christians so and then I mean there, there's so much to this mm-hmm. um, and then you have people like I, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I, so-and-so, and they're usually talking about a, a loved one, whether mm-hmm. it's a child or a, an, a, a parent mm-hmm. or a brother, sister, and they'll say, well, they made a profession in 1995, so mm-hmm. I know they're saved, and, and, but they're, they've been living like hell ever since. And so mm-hmm. there are so many, I, I don't know if you want to say angles to this, but in, in any case, it's 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 concerning. It's distressing. Mm-hmm. They're going to hell. So, the, some people are who who don't realize it. I think least least Prof Dennis <laughs> gets hate mail. Define what you just said, uh, Prof Dennis. How do you know they're going to hell? Well, the ones that are not in Christ are going to hell. That oh, I can say oh, without okay. without batting yes. an eye. Now the question is. Which ones are those? Well, well, Prof. Abby said they made a profession when they were younger and they lived like hell. Where do they stand? Where, where is that line? Well, as, as this author said, and, and I, will, I will concur with, I'm not the judge. I mean, I'm not the final judge. Mm-hmm. But, but there are more than one time in the New Testament where we're told we can, there are indicators of where people are at in Christ mm-hmm. or not. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Chris said earlier about, you know, before we got on the air, he talked about wolves and sheep's clothing, mm-hmm. you know. So it, it, it talks about the Holy Spirit in us is you know communicates with the Holy Spirit and someone else. I mean, I, I I'm not quoting that verse quite right. Uh, hopefully, I'm not making it up either. Mm-hmm. But uh, but there's a communication. I mean, and and not that that's the all end all. But if yes. where's that line though? What about the person who goes to church every Sunday? Where where's that line? Where is it? Because again, Prof. Abby talked about there's two mega organizations that meet on Sunday morning in our area, and those pews are full. How they used to be. (laughs) There's still a lot of them going there. You're right, maybe not as much. Where is it? What do we say to those people who say, but I go to church every Sunday, and I give lots of money to the church? What, what, Chris, what can I mean, we say? I mean, I can hog this whole time, but I want to let, I don't know if Chris. Chris, you you want to jump in? Yes. Remember, um, and I had to look it up, I apologize. In 1 Corinthians 5, Paul comments the church not to associate with sexually immoral people. That's a judgment. Um, Mm -hmm. Expel the wicked person from among you. That's judgment. Um, So not Christians should, should judge other believers. But remember that we aren't judging to condemn them to hell. No. That is God's Mm -hmm. final judgment, right? Mm -hmm. But it is, we make judgments every day. Mm-hmm. We make it. We have to. That's just how people are. Not that we have to, but that's what we do. We make judgments. It seems in our politically correct culture, the Christians judging based on the truth and word of God is judgy. <laughs> but somebody who is leftist and woke, hey, I finally get to use that term. Oh, but someone who's woke <laughs> who judges, that's not that's not wrong. And so it's a double standard. But remember, in Matthew, right, Jesus says, don't judge lest ye be judge yourself. But remember, what he's telling us is when you listen, when you, when you read the rest of that verse and the rest of what that's is going on, he says, when you look at someone else, look at the log in your own eye before you tell someone to take the speck out of their own eye. In other words, make sure that you've resolved and you've come to me or don't come be to a Christ hypocrite. with your sin before you, with love, point out the sin of somebody else. Make sure yours is or that you're being repentant for yours. Yes. Right? Yes. And so, yes, we are to judge, but we are to judge with love and humility. And that's the whole point of, of how we are to act as Christians, is to love but speak the truth. We, we 
do judge. We are expected to judge, but do it with love and with humility to Christ, knowing there's a freight train of judgment coming. Oh, yeah. And here's what you need to do to get right. Now, if they still turn and call me crazy or call <laughs> us whatever they want to call us, I'm not going to react to that, but at least I know I've done what I was asked to do, what, what the Lord and the Spirit has done in my heart to tell people. God has a way for you to be saved. And if and I can't make people listen, mm-hmm. right? But I can definitely I can definitely control how I respond to somebody else <clears throat> and how I um, don't veer from the truth, right? But what we're seeing with this unsaved Christians, uh, boy, it just it just reminds me so much 2 Timothy 4 where the people will look for preachers who tickle their ears instead, where they will abandon the truth, right? Mm-hmm. And that's really what this is all about, abandoning the truth to appeal to the culture. There's a second clip when Mr. Drew and Hannah were, they were interviewing Dean Inceta, who, uh, Dennis, you say was a, a pastor in Florida? Yeah, wrote he's the a book. pastor in, in Tallahassee, Florida. And, he, and he, he, the next clip is he tells a story of when he's speaking to one of his friends and one was going to Northern uh, California and one was going to the Bible Belt for a mission trip. Let, let's listen to the clip. Yeah, I had a moment of what I call missional insecurity. Missional insecurity is kind of <laughs> like when you're when you're in high school and all your friends are going to Haiti, they're working in an orphanage for spring break and you're going to Panama City and uh, you know in Florida. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I felt. I felt like he was going to an orphanage for a spring break and I was like going on a cruise. That's how I really felt because uh, he was going to Northern California and I was going to my hometown, which is only about 10 miles from the Georgia border and about a less than hour drive to Alabama. So much Bible Belt element in this area of North Florida where I'm from. So I just mentioned that to him, that I admired what he was doing, thought it was really great. He was taking his family out to Northern California, so secular, not a lot of churches. And he cut me off and said, what are you, man, what are you talking about? He said, where you're going in Florida is more difficult than where I'm going. And I'm not here to debate which place is more difficult, because I think the enemy is everywhere, and everywhere is hard. It just looks different. But I looked at him, I said, what do you mean? And he said, where I'm going in Northern California, there's very little confusion about who's a Christian and who is not. Mm. He said, where you're going... There's so much confusion. Everyone thinks that they're a Christian. It's almost like you have to get someone lost, he said, in order for them to actually be saved. There's no clear starting point here. And that's what makes it such a difficult and underrated mission field. And I actually believe it's the largest mission field in America. It might look different in other parts of the country than the Bible Belt, but there's still this idea of cultural Christianity. If you go to different places across the country, in very few places are the majority of the people atheists or agnostics. All right, he attacks the concept of cultural Christianity. He attacked the Bible Belt. I'm, I'm, I don't like him doing that, being as I am from the Bible Belt. Um, but anyway, what do we have to say about that? He, he says this, not sure I quite agree, but the biggest mission field is actually in the Bible Belt. What say ye? Well, I don't. I don't necessarily agree or disagree. He doesn't cite a fact or a study or, and and I think it could just be hyperbole. Is that the right word? Where it's, he's trying to show us that, um, it's easy to see where, in San Francisco, for example, um, people who do not are not Christians, a lot easier to see and and separate from those who are believers, from an area where everyone claims to be believer, but, and and I've been in churches in the South. Um, where I, I ask after several weeks, when, when are we going to talk about the reason that Christ came to earth? You know, a, 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 I, love, I love Paul Washer. Every pastor should bring it back to Christ crucified, our redemption and our redeemer. Mm-hmm. That, that if you tell a story, bring it back to that's why we need a redeemer. We are, we are sinners in need of a savior. Christ came and saved us. There's nothing we do that, that gains salvation, but the free gift of his salvation and the blood, is his, the shedding of his blood on the cross. Every message should come back to that. Or Absolutely. if at the very end, I've told this wonderful story about gossip and how it's sinful, that's why we need Christ. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, and since this, James kind of started with this a little bit, you know, uh, judge not unless you be judged. And I, I, 
I'm just going to read a quick couple of verses out of the same chapter, Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware false prophets who come to you with sheep's clothing inwardly, but are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are, are grapes gathered by thorn bushes or figs by thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased trees bear bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree does not bear every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. And I and I think that I mean that verse is I think it's aimed at, at leaders. It sounds like at least at the beginning of that. See we we are we are to say, who do we follow? Who are we listening to? Who is teaching us? And I think yes we absolutely have to exercise good judgment why, why, with why regard be, to that. Why would it be just to leaders? Uh, just the first 15, part of the the talk. first part of well, the verse. He's, yeah, he's, he t- made it sound like beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But then but they're coming with a message. There, you, you know, which seems to me to be a, a little bit different, related, but a little bit different than what we're talking about here. Because what we're talking about here are people who. And, and and not just culture of Christians because I mean there's there's a lot of that I I mean my family is <laughs> there are quite a few in my own family Every and they family. don't even know what they're they're missing there's mm. <clears throat> although scripture is I mean scripture is read in their church and I I when I went to that church it was the Catholic Church and I used to hear just not from the homily because nothing of value was ever preached from the homily when the homily but from scripture itself i think what does that mean once in a while or oh i'd remember a verse and think oh that's kind of scary you're talking about mainline churches well uh, well i've been talking about the catholic church in this well even further away the the catholic church but i'm not going to let you all off the hook with a few minutes we have less it's easier to look at the Catholics or the main line. Right. No, but what right. I but but I I also wanted to say there's also this the hyper grace movement, right? Oh yeah. That's Where, easy. You know, it, it's opposed is can Jesus be your savior well, without being thing. your lord? I mean, I mean there really, are tons the, well, the and tons of people who believe that. Mhm. It's tons. It's, yeah, but it's it's two different um is it? I think it's two different groups. I, I think the group that he's aiming for okay. are the people who sit in Bible teaching churches and still are lost. Well, well he in the other video mm-hmm. that I that you guys probably didn't watch that I but You're he, correct. <laughs> he he was going to church every day of his life, he said, till he was thirteen. He went <coughs> went to some conference. Old old school, you know, you know, just as I am's played a hundred times, and he he accepted Christ then. And but he said as he was going up to, you know, the altar, he was angry. He was saying, "I've he's thirteen years old. I've never heard this in my church, even yeah. though the church he was going to, uh, you know, I, he didn't specify what kind it was. It was a Christian mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. His whole family went there, mm-hmm. but he says he was mad because he hadn't heard." The gospel. Hmm. That's what I was going to say, because sin and repentance yep. is so seldom preached now. Well, now, now and now it is, and yes. discipline. Yeah. Well, church discipline is <laughs> because we have lost that. So the people think there there is no standard. It doesn't matter how you live, as long as you believe. And what they're talking about is believing. Having faith is just an intellectual belief. It's not trust. Faith is really trust. And I, that is the essence of that is just lost, mm-hmm. and I think, it, in it, most of our churches, at when, least up here. But when you have that I trust, when you have that faith, it cannot not show itself. Right. I mean, there's got to be evidence. I mean, if there's no evidence, then it, it can't. I mean, how, logically, rationally, reasonably, is it real? Is it really there if there's not some outward expression? Yes, there are baby Christians and they grow. Sometimes they put, baby Christians put 
to shame the quote unquote mature Christians with their faith as they stumble. I don't think that's share. true. I don't think that's true. Well, I mean, there are some. There are some baby Christians. I don't think that's true. I think some. a lot of people that we say are mature Christians oh, well, just because they put their butt in the pew well, for yeah. 20 years don't make you a mature Christian. A baby Christian, by definition, can't outshine a mature Christian. The, the, well, oh well, saying. okay, I see. Okay, maybe there. Yeah, but but even but even some of the mature Christians, I think, sit on their laurels, and and what you can't go further than that. Well, a mature okay, okay, Christian okay, okay. sit on his laurels. Uh, maybe right. I'm maybe I'm thinking of the wrong kind of mature Christians. You, you're talking about old Christians. Okay. <laughs> <That's what you're laughs> talking about. Yeah. Not okay. necessarily. Okay. 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 That yes. actually makes better sense. Dave. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. Old I, Christian I, versus I, mature. I sit corrected. I sit because corrected. someone young can be mature. Absolutely. Yeah, but I'm talking about someone who's saved like only hours. And they are out preaching to their family, and they're doing it, quote unquote, the wrong way. But they are yeah. sharing their faith in yeah. with enthusiasm, and yeah. you couldn't shut them up yeah. until they start talking to the mature Christians, like, oh no, Old. okay, or or whatever, <laughs> and and they and they say, no, you should say it this way, and yeah. you know, you need to curb this yeah. and that. Let, let's have a class where we teach you how to talk to people yeah. about what's in the Bible. Yes. Huh. Um. I, I I love the idea of Christians coming together and having these discussions the way that we do. I I was not impressed with some of the churches that we had gone to before that had a curriculum to teach you how to evangelize and how to talk to people and make sure you do it this way and that way and memorize Bible verses so you mm-hmm. can you can spit them at people and and my favorite one of the churches we went to we're going to teach you how to heal people too. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that um, that was a cult. <laughs> so, so I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, I, I would never discourage a young new Christian from going out and and mm-hmm. go to town. Absolutely, but but learn from your conversations with people. Yeah, and yeah. ask me questions. Wait a minute, I talked to somebody about abortion, and they said this, and I got stumped. Oh, well, here's what I would say. Let Let's we're over time. Let Let's start the final words. I, right. I'll I'll start. Let, let's give a, a word of encouragement or some sort of discernment to our, our audience. He, here's the one thing. If you go to a church and you're sitting in a quote-unquote Bible-believing church and they are preaching critical race theory <laughs> and they're telling you how wonderful you are and the gospel is not preached, God is not shared, and look for the key words, sin, repentance, obedience, if that if those words are not commonly coming from the pulpit, find a new church. Amen. New Let, final add, word. Final word. Two. I'm going to add at least two words. Okay. Suffering. Yes. And I'm and trying to be uh, succinct, but yes. Yeah. And and yeah. There, and the other word went out of my mind. That's okay. Final word. Well, that was the one word, but the the thing is, you know, what we were also talking about is, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Yeah. You know, again, that's the next verse in the, what I read in Matthew 7 there. Mm-hmm. And this, this guy, the pastor, whatever his name is, um, and he, he was saying the best, when, when you, if you approach these people, yeah, yeah, if, when you approach these people, they could get real defensive. So the, one of the, his first step is just ask them Questions. what it means to be a Christian or how did you come to faith? And listen to what they say, yeah. and that will give you clues on what to do. Because yes, we can be judgmental, mm-hmm. but yes. Final word, Prof. Abby. Oh, I, I, I think uh, Professor Dennis used up my time. I, oh, I don't want to start a new topic <laughs> oh, here. So. No, he was a little long winded. <laughs> chairman I, I yields his time back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, Prof. Chris, final word. I, I would, I would include persecution. Yes, the um, willingness to be persecuted. The yes. willingness and the John and Peter rejoiced in being persecuted as their, our Lord and Savior was persecuted as well. Uh, the servant is no better than the master, and if he was persecuted, we should expect it as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I agree, if that, that's missing, mm, you really need to consider where you are, and we know a wonderful church in Palatine that will welcome <laughs> you. And that does it for the first podcast of the year for such a time as this. Uh, I would still say the Bible Belt is the best uh, culture in this country. And with that said, with my LSU Tigers, the national reigning champions of college football, 
from the Bible Belt. I will end with this. Les le bon temps roule. Let the good times roll in 2020 for such a time as this. God bless and see you later. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm. For such a time as this.